So, set it back on the mill. I have my Power block locked in. I have a center finder in the in the, in the uh, spindle, and now all I need to do is plug in my Dero. So I'm one of those very lucky people who have DROs on their mills, but I'm also one of those very unlucky people where only the x-axis works. But that's okay because that's the important one for this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to find the center of the X and then we're going to plug it in. Seven one five. So we found that center. I'm just gonna do a sanity check, visual, just using the center finder. And you bring it to home. Just looking up at the dimple. That looks good. That looks on center. So our X is trimmed in, and now we have to do our Y offset. Um, so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to touch off against the edge of the column bar. Off. Um, and since we have at zero, we can traverse on the X and come back to it. So, lock a bit and unlock my Y. Zero. My DRO is broken. So, I'm going to turn the machine off. That's our zero position on Y. And then I'm going to calculate the offset we need for going in that direction. So, we need to traverse uh, Y 725 thousandths. So, we're going to do this the old fashioned way. Thirty-five. So and there's one hundred. I have a. Uh, scribe line on the part just so I can check it. So that looks good. You have to subtract. So I forgot to do the offset for the center finder, which is a good thing to catch. Sets. Um, I'm gonna pull the. I'm gonna lock down the y-axis. That's for sure. Um, and then I'm going to pull my center finder out and put in my end mill. So to get that 
uh, Z depth of the port, we're going to do this stock is 7 8 stock, which is 875. Half of 875 is 4375. Uh, and then we're going to subtract from 4375 20 thousandths because that is the radial stock to leave in the center. So that gets us 417.5. So our plunge depth that we want to use our quill for eventually is 417.5. Um, and we have a quill stop set. So basically we're going to uh, leave the quill stop exactly where it is. We don't have to touch that. We are going to move the knee down. Oh, I always mess this up. So we're going to touch off for the Z depth. Um, so what we're going to do is we're touching off using the quill. So we want the quill stop to be bottomed out when we're just touching the stock. So, I'm going to put the quill on, I'm going to lock it in place, and then I'm going to turn the machine on and touch off the top using that ball. I'm going to make sure we're at X0, just so we're, we know we're hitting the highest point. I already dimpled it a little bit, so I'm going to go back about two thousandths. Uh, just because I know that's going to cause some close air error. So, we can now bring the quill up. We're going to stop the machine. And then we're going to measure the amount we need to raise the quill. Um, so that when it hits that stop of the quill stop, we're at the depth for the stock to leave on the porting. So, we are going, the trick I have to do that is, so we need to leave the, the dimension of the raw material is 7 8 stock, which is 875. 875 divided by 2 is 43.75. And then um, we're going to leave a 20 thou radial stock to leave for each side of the gap between the ports. And that's going to leave us at 417.5 is the depth that we need to bring the knee of the mill up so that when we hit that stop on the bottom, we're going to be at the depth, the right depth. So the way that I figured out to do this was, this is pretty uh, pretty quick and dirty. Um, this is going to need adjustment on the cool handle, you know, just a couple thousands. This will get us within about five thousands. Uh, so we are going to measure it as it sits using this datum, which is uh, a machine part of the casting on the knee, and we're going to hold it firm against that casting, and then we're going to touch the needle. So we are at 3.4675. Um, so, do some quick math, and I'm going to use a calculator just so I don't mess up. So, 3.4675 minus 0.4175, that's pretty easy, uh, that's going to leave us at 305. So we need to raise the quill up. So that's, on the dial, that's 400, so we're going to double check. Oh, that's a different pair of calipers. Um, we're going to check. If you had, you know, four hands, you could have the caliber on. This is basically uh, a quill DRO. Wow, we're really close. Wow. I'm just on it today, really nailing these dimensions. I just want to really make sure that I'm not getting caught up on any paint. So we're at 30615, so I'm going to bring it up 10 more thousandths, which is 
basically what we thought we would have to. So my dials are pretty good. Make sure we're not getting any dirt under there. And make one more adjustment. You just I really want to get this right because the closer you get it here, the less bad parts you're gonna make. Okay, so that's pretty spot on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock the quill and then we're gonna measure it again just to make sure and we wanna lock this down really tight because we don't want any of the axes moving except for the one that we want to be moving. Because that's how you're gonna get some uh, inconsistent parts. So we moved a couple thousands, but we moved in the direction that we're gonna have to adjust. So we should be good. So right now we're sitting at 3055. Um, which gives us a good amount of room because the, the animals, especially carbide on this low horsepower and RPMs that we're running, tend to dig in a little bit. So we should be good on that. So we are going to take a test cut. I'm going to pull the cool handle off of here for now. Um, we're on zero. We got our RPM set to 1200 RPMs. I'm just going to be hand feeding with the quill. I'm actually going to just double check with the x-axis out of the way. Just do a visual sniff test and see if that looks about right. Um, let me just lock down. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, let's, let's give it a shot, see what happens. Just make sure my stock is locked down. start in the center. There's no reason you couldn't go from one side to the side. Maybe I can try that here. Um, but first let me do it the way I'm used to. So I'm going to go from the center and then we're going to go straight plunge. We're getting a good chip there so 1200 RPM doing good. These carbide ball embers are really sharp. They do a really good job. So I'm just watching my stop on the depth and I'm going to lock the quill. Step over 200,000 in the direction. I'm just watching the DRO. You probably can't see it right now. So I'm coming up with 150. And that's 200. I'm going to go the other direction, nice and slow, so we don't streak the surface. Now we're cutting again. There's 100. And there's 200. So I'm going to come center. Bring it up. Okay, so now we are going to pull the cowl puck out, and this is the beauty of using stops. So that's the port we just cut. So it has really nice arcs. Try to get to focus. There we go. So it has a really nice arc. The surface, surface finish is really good. We're pretty good. Um, we have a little bit of streaking just from the mill not being very rigid with these plunge, but that'll all get polished out. I like to polish them. Um, doesn't remove that much material, just evens up the streak. So now we're going to flip it over. We are going to make a second cut. So I'm pushing it up against my stop, and tightening the vise, and uh, we're just going to do the same thing. And then we're going to measure the distance between. We're going to measure our left stock and see so, there's a hundred, two hundred. So now we have, and there's the first side, and there's our second side. So the gap between here looks awful large right now, it's because this, uh, that outside surface is going to get turned down, that's where the taper gets turned. It's going to get turned down quite a bit, so that'll actually get a lot closer. 